Madrid, Poland, froknowsphoto.com. And this is a continuation of the Fro Film Project, which I haven't touched in a little while. But let me tell you what I've been up to with it. Well, I had my, I, I found under my bed at home, my dad's house, my first negatives. Literally, the first roll of negatives, because it says negative roll A, that was my way of organizing it, A, B, C, D, E, and all the way up, and I also found ones from junior high school, I'm 13, 14 years old, uh, shooting baseball and different school events, and, and the Flyers at 16 or 15 at the time, and so I had everything scanned, and I want to go through these images to show you how I was shooting when I first started out. So I've picked, I believe it's two rolls that I've combined because I couldn't tell where one started and where one ended, but it's of the same subject, baseball from junior high. So I was, let's say, I had to be 13 or 14 years old at the time shooting with a Canon EOS Alon using a 100 to 300 millimeter piece of crap F4.5 to 5.6 or F4 to 5.6 Really bad push, uh, really bad zoom, but I didn't know any better. So let's start. Squirrel! I'm sure some of you are wondering, why is there a squirrel picture on your roll of film? Well, when you shot film, if you had a squirrel picture or you had pictures that you were testing out and you only took two pictures of what was going on, then you didn't rewind the film and, and blow 34 frames of a 36-frame roll. So, yeah, we'll just blow through those pretty quick. Really bad photos. When you stink and you have nothing to shoot, all you do is go outside and sit there and try to figure out what to do. So that's me when I first started. So let's look at baseball. This is probably not in order because this is a semi-okay picture. Now, don't worry about the film. Don't worry about the grain or the noise or the color. None of these are color corrected. This is how I shot. So vertical, filling the frame as much as possible. I didn't really know anything about that yet, but this was one of the better sports pictures that I had because it had the ball. Uh, I got my exposure right. Oh. I didn't get my exposure right. Uh, the camera got its exposure right because I was shooting in the running man mode. So I have 70 pictures or here or so, so I want to go through them. Not a good shot of the catcher, being that he's a right-handed catcher throwing. He's going to block his face. Unless he's turned towards me, I needed to shoot it quicker. Plus, being that it's a 5.6 lens, and it's probably in running man mode shooting at F8 or F11 outside, you can see that you have these people in the background in focus. Deep, deep, you know, look at the focus in the background. I mean, he's in focus, but the background is, is nice and clear. Not, I mean, it's not bad. It's an action shot. A little late on the, on, the, on the swing. Should have had that earlier, sooner. Oy, oy, oy. Oy, oy, oy. Not only is it back focused, but what kind of composition is this? Vertical. This should have been a horizontal. It's terrible. It's terrible, but I didn't know any better at 13. Obviously, this is better at filling the frame. I don't know if these two rolls are combined where I took them at, you know, one year prior and then one the next year when I started to get better. But obviously, what you have to keep in mind is I'm shooting film, and it's not like you could take a picture and then look at it and take a picture and then look at it again. You took a picture and then had to wait to see what you got. So hopefully, hoping for a, a swing, you're blowing a lot of film. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. These are terrible. Oh, my God. This is even worse. It's like, what are you doing? But see, that's horrible. Not knowing to fill the frame. Just what, what could that look? That's a snapshot. Oy. This one's not as good. He made an out. Looks like everybody's coming in from after the, uh, the inning. This kid, uh, this is Phil Ash, I remember, just got the ball in there. Horizontal would be better because I can't fill the frame anymore. So think of that. If I shot it this way, let's get out the develop module because I'll help you with framing here. Let's make sure that we lock on here to two, three, composition. I mean, a little more headroom. I mean, that is going to be a winning picture. But no, no, I had to shoot it the other way. Anyway, not very good either. That's after an inning. John Faganiak, that's his name. This is, oh, this is one of my favorite pictures. Uh, Greg Osbeck, he now teaches actually at that school, uh, in, the, in the high school. But this is right before, see, filling the frame more, much better. But look at all the dead space at the top. So you got to remember, when I'm using this Canon EOS Alon, it's not like you can move focusing points around. You find your center focus point and you shoot. That's why there's so much dead space up there. Oh, much better filling the frame. Again, none of these are cropped. Nicer color, nicer exposure. Got it right. Oh, my God. Terrible focus. Okay. So let me explain to you what I was attempting here. Multiple exposure. 
I started to switch around and try to figure out how to get multiple exposure images. So what is this? This is two images on the same negative. Yes, you can do it now really easy on digital or just sandwich it in Photoshop, but I had to figure out without any teaching what was going on here. So what I did, and I think I remember this, is I would, I would look at what the exposure told me it should be if I was taking one picture. So the exposure said through the meter that it should be at one, let's say, one two fiftieth of a second, and just forget whatever, 5.6. So then I'm like, okay, if one exposure is right at one, one, uh, one two fiftieth of a second, and now I need to sandwich two exposures, well, I can't do them both at two fifty, uh, one two fiftieth of a second because that will be overexposed. It will be too dark. So then I'm like, oh, well, if I cut it in half, then those two exposures should add up to be one proper exposure. This is what was going through my mind. So I would shoot at one five hundredth of a second. But what you had to do is you had to hit the button on the camera to do multiple exposures. I had to take a picture of the guy in the on-deck circle and then wait for him to get up the bat and then hope that I get a good picture as the secondary picture. I would soon come to learn that if your background sucked, it's not so bad over here with the trees, but with the people, it's distracting. But it was kind of cool because I was experimenting at the time. Much better to get closer. Bad, bad focus. Look at these focuses. Getting better, not better. Terrible focus. Oh, trying to get the action. Missed the action. A little late. Had to move over. That's much better. Oh, so I guess I got it right before. That's all right. That's all right. John Faganiak again, taking a ball in the dirt, probably ball four because he's going to first. And there you go. A much better winning pitcher right there. Picture, not pitcher, because he is a pitcher, but still. Filling the frame much better. That's my dad umping, by the way. I don't, this was, uh, I was 13, so we're talking 10, no, that would be 13 or 14. That's 20 years ago. So my dad was in there in his 40s. He was calling the game. This is Greg Osbeck. It's all right, but you can't really see his face, but it's a good composition. Trying to get a play quickly at third base sliding, terrible. Didn't do a good job of it. This kid passed away. Uh, this is Teddy Haldis. Really, really good kid. Really good athlete. Really cool family. This was just one of the – It's a real, th look, it was so easy to shoot without the fence. Just shoot the kid here, and boom, you're going to get a nice picture. Um, yeah. Yeah. What, what do I say other than my focus is terrible? Oh. Uh, so he's scoring right here on a play. I don't know who that is. I don't remember. But yeah, this was the best. This is one of my favorite pictures. This was one of the ones that in junior high school, it's just really good. It's just as he's getting rid of the ball. Oh my God, you can see how bad the like. Don't worry about the grain, but the the bokeh was so grossly gross in the background. But whatever. This was a really cool shot. And look, I'm 13, 14 years old, shooting in auto mode, basically running man, trying to figure out how to do this but not bad. That's terrible composition. That's good composition. It's just, that's a strike, by the way. It's right at the belt. Um, he didn't swing, obviously. Not good from a distance. Another thing, cut his feet off because I was moving. Oy, bad play. What you had to contend with was people throwing balls. I don't, that's a ball that's too low um, when it crosses the plate, but if he swung, it would have been much better. Bad again, bad again, trying to do something different just a little late on the swing that's anthony forget his name um that's a good swing a little late again obviously out of focus <laughs> back focused uh phil ash cut his feet off needed to shoot further down don't know why i'm that far off don't know who that is but not a good picture either john faganiak again back focused see bad lenses bad lenses i'm zoomed in a little on that but that's not good is that joe kunzig that must be Joe Kunzik. I'm going to have to send it to him. Um, out of focus, fat umpire, uh, and bad play at third. So let's blow through these a little quicker. That's better, better lighting, because I'm at a distance. Uh, I'm shooting from the one side with the light. So this would have been about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 3.30. So the sun would have been behind me shooting towards the school, which was better. I kind of learned that if I go on the other side, I will get a better image. Plus, it's a lefty batting. Um, that's my dad umping again, so yeah. Oh, that's better, but no ball. That's, yeah. There you go. I got the ball in there. That's a pop-up, by the way, can of corn. Oy, out of focus, out of focus, out of back focused. Yeah, not good. Oy, 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 oy. 
That's all right. Thick, really thick, good exposure. Um, lefty pitching, that's not bad. Just That's better. I used to love this, too. And by the way, just for fun, you know, just process the – these are really bad – not the best scans in the world, but the, we get the point it was just to teach. Look, this is two rolls of film. Not a lot of keepers, but the keepers I did get are pretty good, like something like this and some of the others I talked about. But the, the, how bad was my focus? How bad is this lens that I was using? But it's all about learning. And if you take these couple of winning images and you learn from them, and I, I was in auto mode, right? Auto freaking mode. I was in running, man, because I thought that's what I needed to do. So I wasn't very good, but I, I had an eye and had a way of capturing some pictures and and learned from the bad pictures what would make a better picture now I couldn't learn right when I took it because you can't look at a picture when you're shooting film but I learned after the fact and progressed to get better and better so over the series of I think there's maybe 30 rolls that I took and I may have some more scanned from some of my early concerts I'm going to start sharing these rolls of film with you guys to show you where I started and the progression that I made and you can see that not it's not that good so if I get a couple of keepers and you guys are in the same boat today where you get a couple of keepers, it's something to grow on. I'm 20 years into shooting. That's a long time. That means I started at 13. I'm a long way into doing it. So if you just picked up your camera or you've been doing it for a couple of years, you still have a long freaking way to go to feel really comfortable, comfortable and confident in your work. So that is a Fro Film Project video. If you want to see other Fro Film Project videos, go ahead, click up on the screen right now to take you over to a playlist of them. And please subscribe here on YouTube. But if you want to learn from me how I got my exposures better and how to get your exposures, how to get out of auto, you can click up on the screen to get a preview of the Fronos Photo Guide to Getting Out of Auto. Go ahead and do that. Jared Poland, Fronosphoto.com. See ya.